Hello everyone, my name is Chantel, and in this video, I'm going to be going over simulation and debugging with Microchip's Libero SoC. It has its own proprietary simulator, but the design suite allows for third-party simulators, and ActiveHDL's verbose and fast-performing environment provides lots of simulation and debugging tools, as well as efficient simulation time. ActiveHDL's simulation engine can even cut down simulation time to at least half of how long other simulators would take. So, for this video, I'll be using Libero SoC 2023 and ActiveHDL 13.1. Now to start, open up a new project by going to Project, and then click on New Project. Once the new project window appears, specify the project name, and then specify the location of the project, then click Next. In the device selection part, just keep the device family at the default Smart Fusion 2 and select the first device listed, which is the M2S005 1FG484. After that, just click on Finish. For this video, I'll be using one of the IPs in the IP catalog, and because I'm doing that, I need to make sure that the library path of the precompiled library for the Smart Fusion 2 is properly set. First thing to do is to get the pre-compiled libraries for ActiveHDL. These can be found either on Microchip's website for Libero pre-compiled libraries, or you can go to Aldex Downloads page and find the pre-compiled libraries there. After the pre-compiled libraries have been added into ActiveHDL, you can now head on over to Project, Project Settings, Smart Fusion 2, Under Simulation Library, and then set the path to the location of the precompiled library located within ActiveHDL's files. Once that is done, click on Save, and then exit the window. Next, we need to make sure that the default simulator is set to ActiveHDL. Go to Project, now go to Tool File, Profiles, Simulation, and then click on Add Profile. Label this profile ActiveHDL, and then select ActiveHDL as the tool integration option, and then specify the location of the ActiveHDL executable. Once that's done, click OK. Make sure ActiveHDL is set as the active simulator, then click OK to finish. Now that we have our pre-compiled library set and ActiveHDL is set as a default simulator, it's time to use one of the IPs in the IP catalog for simulation. To access the catalog, go to View, then go to Windows and then Catalog. Inside this tab, there is a search bar, and in the search bar, type in Test Pattern Generator. If you have never used a Test Pattern Generator IP before, it would be grayed out, just like those other IPs that you see that are grayed out, and you would need to right-click and download the IP before using it. Once downloaded, double-click on the IP, and then click OK on the small pop-up window. Then the configurator window will pop up. In this window, you can modify the IP parameters, but for this demonstration, I'm leaving them at default values, so from here, you can just click OK. After a bit of time, a message should appear to confirm that the IP generation was successful. The files for this IP should now be inside of the project, as you can see in the Components window. With the IP now added to the project, we'll need to update the project hierarchy. To do this, go to Stimulus Hierarchy tab and click on Build Hierarchy. Then do the same thing inside of the Design Hierarchy tab. We'll also need to assign a root for the project, so while we're inside this tab, right-click on the Pattern Generator component and click on Set as Root. At this point, we've finalized our sample project, so now we can get our simulation settings adjusted. Head over to Project, Project Settings, Do File under Simulation Options, and just change the test bench name to the test bench module name. In this case, it would be the name of the module 
in the test bench file. And we could see it is labeled as pattern underscore test. So going back to our new file settings, we're going to change our test bench module name to pattern test. Once that's done, make sure to keep this box checked to use the automatic do file for now and click save. Now in the design flow tab, head over to verify pre-synthesized design and then double click on simulate. A window will pop up and ask to associate stimulus. Select yes. And then in this window, change the selection to user. Select the test bench file on the left hand side, click add, and then click OK. From here, Active HDL will open up after some time, and then we'll be able to see that the simulation has successfully run. I'm going to now end the simulation and close Active HDL. And then I'll show how to run a simulation with debug capabilities and code coverage. First, find the auto-generated do macro for the project located inside of the simulation folder of the Libero project. Next, create a copy of that macro and rename it. I'm going to rename mine to my underscore run dot do. Now open up the new do file in a text editor. And from here, we're going to add some arguments to the command lines. In the A log command lines, I'm going to add the argument dash coverage followed by the SB parameters to enable statement and branch coverage. In the ASIM command line, I'm going to add dash debug or dash dbg to allow debugging capabilities. And then I'm going to add dash acdb along with dash acdb underscore cov followed by the sb parameters to get code coverage during simulation save and exit that file and now let's go back to the do file settings in libero uncheck the use automatic do file and specify the user defined do file which would be the one that was just created Click on save, and now let's run the simulation once again. And once again, we have our waveform view window for our simulation. Here, you can sort your signals in various ways, like by signal type, or even by name. You can also group your signals in various ways. One way is by creating a named row. After labeling your named row, you can select the signals that you'd want and then move them under that named row. You can also select your signals. And after you've selected all your signals, you can right click and then go to create and then create a virtual group from there. You can rename this virtual group as well, and you can expand that virtual group to see the signals that you've grouped in there. In this window, there's a comment tool that lets you insert comments into different parts of the simulation run. In this example, I've put the comment blue by this signal as an indication for the RGB signals. And then there's also a measurement tool that allows you to place measurements across one signal. Or you can even place measurements across two signals. And during your simulation, you can track different types of events across a signal. For example, you can track rising or you could track falling edges. And these are just some of the many tools you can use for your simulation's waveform results in the waveform viewer. And now with debug enabled, you can easily reset the simulation and you can use the different run buttons 
to run for a certain amount of time. And you can also use the stepping functions to step through the code while simulation is running. On the left hand side, you can use the structure browser to view the different source files. And again, thanks to debug being enabled inside of these source files, you can set breakpoints within them by clicking on the line and double clicking inside of the gray column. These breakpoints can then be used to see what the simulation results are when the breakpoint is reached. I'm going to show that you can split the screen vertically. And from there, you will see that after clicking on run, you could see how the waveform viewer on the right hand side is updating in real time as we click on run and it stops at the breakpoints. There's also other different debugging windows like the watch window. You could use this window to monitor other signals outside of the test bench. Just click and drag signals you want to watch and continue to run through your simulation to view the changes. The changes will be marked in a red exclamation point on the left hand column. And now the design can also access ActiveHDL's advanced data flow, which can be used to view the design connectivity while simulation is running. Just highlight the source item in the structure browser, click add to advanced data flow, and it will automatically generate the visual. You can expand this diagram and you can click on signals to highlight how they are connected. And by clicking view trace, you could see more details on the different processes, instances, and signals within the area you highlight or click on. And finally, with our simulation data, we can now generate a code coverage report. While simulation is still running, head over to simulation, ACDB coverage, then generate report. Leave just the statement and branch coverage checked, and now click on generate. The console shows that the report was generated, and now we can open the code coverage report. When opening the report, you'll be taken to the cumulative summary page that summarizes the percentage of coverage for the various code coverage types. For example, in the statements row, the percentage covered isn't 100%, which means that this test bench didn't execute all the statements during the simulation time. You can also expand the design and click on each individual source to see its own coverage report. And below the design section, you can click on a process and see the statements that were not executed in simulation. In the right hand side where the code is, these unexecuted statements are indicated in red. You can also see how many times each statement was executed during simulation under the hits column. And there you have it. We were able to simulate and debug a Libera project through ActiveHDL and use many of its tools to gather lots of information on the design from simulation alone. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Libero's ability to use third-party simulators allows for the use of ActiveHDL Simulator, making simulation and debugging of Libero projects faster and more comprehensive. That's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching.